One of the most frequent questions I've gotten over the last several months is, hey, what's your pressure washer setup? Where'd you get your pressure washer? Is 1700 PSI enough? Where'd you get that water tank? What size water tank do you need? Do you need a water pump? Is it gravity fed? So in this video, I'll have Lex take you through the entire setup and I wanted to get as granular as we can in terms of what we have in our setup so you can get the most information and see how you can apply that to your situation. So if you're worried about any of the links or, or products that or tools that we use, just check down below. I'm not, we're not gonna know the names of every single little thing. So I'll do my best to link everything down below to give you some type of reference on what to look for. Other than that, let's go ahead and get started on this video. Water tank setup. We have a 100 gallon water tank, and that is uh, fed through our water pump right there on the side, and then that feeds the water to our pressure washer down here. Now, I did make some modifications. I drilled uh, two holes on top of the tank. Now, one hole is to feed the suction hose, so where the water pump is gonna actually suck the water out from I have it to where it feeds all the way to the bottom of the tank so I get the full 100 gallons and then the other hole is for a return hose now what happens is when the water pump is running it's cycling water to our pressure washer and our pressure washer isn't being used the water pump will heat up now to minimize the overheating I just put another hose what we call a return hose and whatever water is not being used is going back into the water tank. Now connected to our pressure washer, we have this 100 foot uh, North Star pressure washer hose reel. But we only have 50 foot of hose here. This makes it quick and easy to just pull the hose and get started on the wash. So our water pump setup is like this. This hose right here is fed through this hole up here into the water tank and it goes all the way to the bottom so I get the full 100, ga 100 gallons now this is the inlet for the outlet I have a white pipe right here now we got two hoses coming out this hose goes straight to the pressure washer this hose goes back into the water tank now the purpose of this hose that, that returns the water is so that whenever water is not being used the water has somewhere to go It'll go back into the tank and the water pump will not overheat. So that was an overview of the current setup that we have. Now I'll ask Lex some questions to dig deeper into how to set up. And these are questions based off of what you guys had asked me. So let's start with the questions. All right, so Lex is the one that has this whole setup. I only know what he tells me about. So it's not like I, that's why I never answer questions in the comments because Lex is the brains behind this. So Lex, what kind of pressure washer do we have? Or which one do you recommend if someone wants to run a pressure washer setup. So the pressure washer we have is called the Active VE52. I think it's discontinued now, but there are some like it on, uh, you can find them on Amazon. Now this pressure washer is 1700 PSI with about two gallons per minute. Now the, uh, the gallons per minute is much more important than the PSI, especially for washing. You get more water coming out, you get, you get to rinse the cars faster, and also it works even better with the foam cannon. Um, now what I recommend for any mobile setup, you can get any pressure washer from Lowe's, Home Depot, they will all work. Before this we had a Greenworks 1700 PSI, it only had 1.2 gallons per minute, but that was just fine to get me through two years. Yeah, so it's not so much the PSI, it's more important the gallons per minute. But even so, like, yeah, I get asked all the time, what pressure washer, what's a good pressure washer? Dude, this one was 150, the one before that was 100. Like it's. We're not spending thousands of dollars on pressure washer. Could we? Yes. Is it gonna make like a huge difference? Not a huge, but it would help a lot. But it's like, we're fine with what we have. We'll continue with it for however long and we'll upgrade when we need to, which is not right now. So where do you get the water tank from? Or is there anything special about the water tank that you need? Nothing special about the water tank. I just picked it up from Northern Tool. They have plenty of water tanks, anywhere from 50 gallons, 200, 500 gallons. Uh, we just chose the 100 gallon. This is more than enough we need. 
we don't do too many washing and uh, we are pretty pretty uh we try to save as much water as we can and is there did you have to drill any holes on this one or like anything custom uh from what i did with the water pump setup yes i did drill holes. do you need that no it already comes with the hole pre-drilled ready for you to just connect any pressure washer hose and we never ran gravity right it, we never been gravity fed it's always no. it's always pumped yeah we never ran gravity fed which you can it's also no issue you just gotta make sure you lift the tank up just a little bit yeah, and what did he say about like you you drilled another hole so you could put a hose in there so we get all 100 gallons yeah. what do you mean by that so uh from factory this water tank comes with a hole pre-drilled like i said um but it doesn't sit all the way at the bottom of the tank so there is about 18 gallons of water that you cannot use because it, it won't come out it's, it's below where the hole is drilled so in order for me to get the full 100 gallons i drilled a hole at the top and i fed a hose through it that sits all the way to the bottom of the tank so I get the full 100 gallons. Now as far as the gun that we're using and the, and the hose, what's the setup, where'd you get it, any special recommendations, anything you do different about it? Okay, so uh, first off, we got the, the North Star reel. We got the 50 foot Flexzilla hose and attached to the hose, we got some uh, quick disconnects, so easy to disconnect it. And this is a SG28 MTM, uh, Hydro Lance gun. Uh, it has a swivel on it, so you're gonna have to fight the hose. Uh, and then it also comes with the quick disconnects over here, so you quick disconnect uh, any attachments. Now we do have another attachment, the wand that makes it longer for those hard to reach big vehicles. Uh, nothing special about it, just makes it a lot easier, a lot more ergonomic, and I mean, just a lot easier to move around. It's way easier to use this than a big old gun, gotta use two hands. Yeah, yeah, there, there is a difference between using the wand, which again, on bigger vehicles or harder reach areas, like let's say it's a truck, like a dually, and we can't get to the end of that fender wheel, it does help to use the wand on it. So it is, it does help to have both those options. But I'd say 85, 90% of the time, we're going with this option because it's so much easier to handle and get way closer, and you don't have to take a step back before you use it on a vehicle. Um, and yeah, we do use a quick release on all of them. Yeah, and it, it does help to have the swivel on it because when it kinks up, you don't have to like, you know, move the, the hose around and try to get it unkinked. You just twist the, you you twist the nozzle, the, the gun itself in it, and you work with it. So that actually does make a difference. And just the like, the, the removing headaches from the operation of like, oh, it's kinked up, let me, no, you just kind of, you know, turn the, the gun around and you're just able to keep on working. Another thing that we do use, which isn't really part of the pressure washer setup, but we do use, uh, what are they called? The guards on the tires. Oh yeah, the uh, detail guard is actually hanging up right down the corner. Okay. Uh, right there so yeah, we, uh, yeah they, you can explain these detail guards uh i mean they, they save a lot of headaches especially with these uh hoses getting stuck to the wheel if you ever walked around the vehicle without these and you know you find yourself fighting the hose getting yanking it out of the tire uh you don't have to with these these things have a little uh roller right here so whenever you pull the hose around the vehicle this thing rolls the hose just slides through it and now you don't have to fight a hose anymore. Yeah, so that does help out a lot. So I, I, we, I would recommend you getting these uh, detail guards. I think they're like, they're, they're relatively cheap. Yeah, they're about like $12, $15 for a pair. Uh, I usually only use two. You can get four and put them on all tires, but yeah. I find two being more sufficient. Yeah, because our, our van is set up always behind the vehicle and it's not like we're gonna wrap all the way around the vehicle. We go on one side and then move to the other. So we've only ever had to use two on the back side, but the ones that are facing towards the vehicle, never on the front side. Okay, so running on the pump, was there any special fittings or modifications that you have to do to the pump to get all the hoses hooked up and running? Or is it you just purchased it, you get the hoses and they just connect and they're yeah. ready to rock and roll? Yeah, no, everything was plug and play, standard fittings, same fitting as the uh, spigot on your house, whatever hose you connect it, it's the same exact fittings on the water pump. So it's just a matter of buying the hoses at the correct length that you need and just screwing them on. And the correct length is just like, by that you just mean like how far is the, is the water pump from the tank and just yeah. get enough to, to, to feed it to the yeah, tank. Yeah, you kind of just estimate how long. I mean, you definitely don't want to buy a 10 foot hose if the pressure washer to the pump, it's a foot away. Uh, that's just unnecessary hose, more more length for water to travel. So yeah, just buy the correct length you need and everything is just plug and play. So after that, like even hooking, like hooking up the, the hose reel to the pressure washer, was there anything specific there? Nope, everything is standard fittings. Uh, all, all it is is just the quick connect. So you just buy the quick connect you connect it to either hand, you, you connect them, and uh, that is it. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. So across the entire setup, to, from the 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 the, the damn water tank, the water tank 
to the pump to the pressure washer to the hose reel to the wand itself there's no special modification or like special anything it's just plug and play for the most part everything is just plug and play you can actually buy a quick disconnect kit from lowe's it comes with all the quick disconnects you need to connect the part a pressure washer to the hose um and it's all it's all just standard fittings they yeah pretty much universal so there's nothing special they just like okay i get the pump i get the hose connect it connect the pressure washer. there's nothing yeah. special that that's one yeah. that they need to know to be like to no, unless unless you get a pressure washer that comes with different size fittings and uh, they'll let you know, then you want to do your research and see what fittings you need. But oh, across the board, for the most part, uh, all the fittings are for any pressure washer and, and hose that you have out there. So let's do a recap. So the pricing of the 100 gallon water tank was 300. That's about yeah. 300. Pressure washer is 150. The, where'd you get the hose from? The these hose I got it from this place called Menards, I believe. Uh, but it was just uh, sixty dollars. Sixty? Yeah, it's a sixty dollar hose. Okay, so it's not even like a super high quality. Like, is it high quality? Uh, it's it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's it's high quality. Oh, it is. There's better ones. There's better ones out there. There's better ones out there. Uh, this is just what I recommend. Okay, so we got three hundred for the tank, one fifty for the pressure washer, sixty for the hose. The hose reel was. Hose reel was a like seven? Uh, it was, yeah, it's rather cheap. Under a hundred bucks. Under a hundred bucks. And then the gun was. The gun was about thirty. Thirty. Right All right. So I'm lost on math, but I think that's three, four fifty, uh, five. Let's say under seven hundred dollars to run this whole thing. Now, of course, like we have a one hundred gallon water tank, so it's a bit bigger. You can probably find the same size, but cheaper. We got it from Northern Tool, so it's I think better quality than like I don't know, I don't know. But you can probably find the tank smaller. Yeah. Those tanks are pretty nice. They're really thick. They're uh, you could have them outside in the trailer. The sun won't. Yeah, see that's the thing. Yeah, and and they're meant for outside use. Yeah. Like they're meant for farms and all that. So I guess they yeah. they are probably made of thicker quality material. Um, so all in all, we're like seven hundred dollars for everything. Um, which you know is that a lot? Is that a little? I mean, you it's very easy to spend way more. Like if you go to like another, if you go to a like a a shop like or like a business that sets you up with a pressure washer setup i think they'll cost more because they go with like a lot, a lot more high quality stuff i'm telling you with this like a 150 pressure washer a 60 dollar uh, hose 50 foot hose a 70 dollar hose row like it's working fine i it, sometimes the pump goes out we have two what what are the oh, what are the, what, what problems do we have what problem have we ran into it, it's primarily been with the pump are we gonna upgrade a pump yeah, to that so that is actually just a it's a cheap pump it's from home depot it's 100 bucks so uh yeah, that, that thing might might go out. It might overheat more than other pumps because uh, it's meant to just drain pools, drain big big areas of water, like flooding the house. That's what it's meant to do. I just kind of rigged it up to work for me. Um, so yeah, the big issue we're running with is that eventually this this uh, thing inside the water pump, I don't want to get too technical. It's like a rubber piece that spins, throws the water out. That will eventually wear out. They, it does come with a replacement, so I find myself replacing it since we basically use it daily. Uh, we replace it every few months or so, um, and then sometimes we just gotta switch out the pump to a brand new one. So there is that issue. Um, we do plan on upgrading to a higher quality pump. That way it lasts us longer. Yeah, same thing with the pressure washer. Uh, what, what's the last thing that, that broke on the pressure washer? Has anything, like, didn't you fix something? Uh, yeah, so on the pressure washer, one of the outlets uh, had just loosened up, so I had to buy a new one. And replace it but we use it every day i mean we're tugging it we're i mean we're yeah. not we're and, not. And, and, and that's the thing i wanted to point out though is that like yes we're having problems but again we're running it off of a 150 50 dollar pressure washer it's not like we spend five six seven eight hundred dollars like for the small product that we're getting for the for how affordable it was to the output that we're getting out of it it's well worth it so yes you can run into problems but for the price for what we do with it like it's, it's still working absolutely fine so you don't need an expensive pressure washer all right, and that's gonna end this video. Hopefully I did a decent enough job asking Lex what's the proper setup. If you have any other questions, leave them down below and I'll try to get Lex to answer some of those because he's the one that knows everything. So any comments or concerns or anything, leave them down below. And look, is this the best setup? Is this the almighty setup? No, of course not. I mean, yes, you can always build something bigger and better and more reliable, uh, but this is what we have. We're not the experts, this is just what we're currently running. It's going to change over the coming several months and years. Like things will change, iteration, iterations will happen. So it's not the end all be all. We're gonna make progress as we make progress. That's really all it comes down to. So I'll talk to everyone on the next. And I keep on forgetting the plug, 
my podcast is down below my facebook training group is down below the guides are down below so check the description box down below for more education or resources to starting and growing your business i'll do better at adding those throughout the video because i need to get more people to click on that podcast link listen to my podcast all right